It seems so hard to nail down what our calling is and what we should do. A short while back, I was attending a branding conference put on by Free Agent Academy, of which I'm one of their professors. But I was there as an attendee, not as a presenter. The branding professor asked us to write out a very brief description, an elevator speech, for our business or idea. I struggled with this for hours and hours. I couldn't articulate it. I was lost in a foggy swirl of ideas and emotions. Then, in a moment of exasperation, I said, okay, I'm not sure I can articulate what my life and my work is to be, but I can tell you what makes me mad, what breaks my heart, the battle I must fight. That blew the door open. It was one of those knock and the door will be opened experiences for me like we see in Matthew 7, 7. Sometimes the path to our core God-given desires for our life, in other words, our calling, according to Philippians 2, 13, is discovered by peering through the window of sorrow, anger, and heartbreak. Through that window, I discovered and wrote this. I am unsettled by the diminishment, dismissal, and sidelining of individuals who carry the image and glory of God which comes through the relentless assault of the world and Satan or the abuse and abandonment of people. I am disturbed by the quick fix teaching and, and counsel about calling that ultimately disheartens people, distancing them from God. I absolutely love when I see the glimmer of gold that runs through a person's life, but more importantly, when they recognize and own that vein of gold in their life. I love and, and compel to help people recover their heart, walk with God, interpret their life, offer their glory, and persevere with joy. I want to spur others on towards love and good deeds, Hebrews 10, 24. Warning the idle, encouraging the timid, and helping the weak, 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. Though I had been speaking and writing on calling for years, I never really wrestled through articulating my own calling compelling an effect until that moment. And it wasn't a quick takedown wrestling match. I had to wrestle with my heart for hours upon hours. It was the hard, diligent work of detangling my thoughts through my fingers that brought the clarity that I was looking for. In the new weekend event we just piloted called It's Your Time, which is a follow-up to the calling retreat, It's Your Call, we had the participants write out their calling manifesto. What they found, as I did, is that it is really difficult to drill through the accumulation of rock and soil of our life and battles to get to the vein of gold. But once you get to it, you can see the path and follow that vein of gold more easily. So don't let the thought, I can't articulate my calling, turn into, so I must not have one. Articulating, translating, discovering, drilling down, detailing is hard work for everyone. You can do it, but it will take time and effort. And it is enhanced by doing this with other people, getting their encouragement and their feedback. That's why we created this new event, but I'll tell you about that sometime later. Your vein of gold, which is the splendor, the calling of your life, is there. You can find it. And you can see it with enough clarity to walk it out, I promise. But the first step is the hard work of articulating it.